Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here this our new campaign in Red World Fan Fork Mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Level, but we're playing as the United Kingdom of Great Britain right now because it was recommended to me on my Discord server because at the time of this recording, I guess the Queen just died. And even though I'm an American and some of us don't really care, I figured, you know what, why not? It's, it, it's uh, good timing-ish. British factories. Our industrial sector has taken a significant hit after the collapse of the European democracy and not so long after the U.S. It's imperative to alleviate the current dismal situation in Britain it finds itself in. Our government faces two choices. Either directly invest in British companies and the military or encourage and support the technological sector. 50 days? Nice. So, state investment. Oh, we have to wait now? Oh, crap. Um, new industrial revolution, state investment. Uh, actually, I'm not even looking at any of this stuff. Do we just say get political power, I guess? Because, ooh, research would be nice. Offshore oil? Hmm. Royal Scottish Guards. Revive Scotland. Um, revive England. Uh, Princess Diana killed. Oh, oh god. Last night, Princess Diana of Wales left Ireland on a private jet and arrived in London with her son, Prince William. After visiting the Republic for a few weeks, the pairs were eager to see Harry, Charles, and Kate again. While still weary from the, her late flight and irritated by an unaccommodating hotel service, the princess decided to drive herself to Buckingham Palace. Diana and William departed from Heathrow Airport through a runway exit just past midnight, heading for central London, purposefully avoiding any paparazzi that may have been alerted to their presence. After arriving in London proper, the pair drove past the Science Museum and along Queen's Gate. At around 12.41 a.m., at the intersection of Cromwell Road, Diana was seemingly not paying attention to the situation in front of her and collided with another car at significant speeds. She proceeded to lose control of the car, swerving to the left before colliding again head-on with the walls of the Yemeni Assembly Embassy. Finally coming to a stop, onlookers rushed to the car, only to find the bloody mess of Princess Diana and a terribly injured Prince William in the back. The Princess of Wales was pronounced dead at that scene, and her son was taken to the family's private hospital. Terrible. <coughs> But uh, I've never played this out, so I don't know what's going to happen to government strength. We can you know, lock her out, or we'll keep her in. But this campaign, obviously, we're going to keep her in. There's a lot to do down here. Oh, Strength in the Protection Union. And the funeral. The public funeral of uh, Diana, Princess of Wales, started at 9.08 a.m. in London, where the tenor bell sounded to signal the departure of the cortege from Kenning Kensing. Kensington Palace. The cop was carried from the palace on a gun carriage along Hyde Park to St. James Palace, where Diana's body would remain for five days before she was taken to uh, uh, the palace. The Union flag on top of the palace was lowered at half mass. The official ceremony was held at Westminster Abbey in London and finished at the resting place in Althorpe. 2,000 people attended the ceremony in Westminster Abbey, while the British TV audience peaked at 32.1 million, one of Britain's highest viewing figures ever. Uh, worldwide, 2 billion people observed the events, making one of the most watched events in history. Goodbye, sweet 2010 princess. Conservative Leadership Election. The Conservative Party hasn't held office since Prime Minister Owens' rise of power in 1989. Tickets passing. Gallant's leadership elections have still failed to result in a win for the once powerful political party, and many members are seriously considering an official dissolution or even annexation by the Social Democratic Party. For now, how? The leader, Owen Patterson, has responded to overwhelming calls for his recognition by announcing that a leadership election should be held as soon as possible. The question is, can he survive this battle or will someone else take his place? I'll be honest, I have no idea about any, mo or at least most of the British stuff here, so, Social Democratic, Conservative Party, Conservative Leadership, Owen Patterson, uh, Smith, Duncan Smith, okay, sure, why not, I have no idea, um, Conservative and Unionist Party, also, I did grab James Havelock for more air XP, so, yeah, we got plenty of political power, since we're just kind of waiting here, see what will happen, since some of these are just lo time locked, so, I like to go for offense. I think we're going to go Mobile Warfare for this campaign just because we have a lot of motorized. I'm not saying they're great. But we do three tank divisions. But they're only eight combat width. So, uh, I think we'll try to go that direction. Like I said, we'll see. We might as well spend some political power electronics. Go with engineering. I usually like to do that one. 0 .09, 0 .09. We have carriers, so we're going to go with capital ship attack probably. Let's go with capital ship attack and stuff like that. So, we're just going to sit in here hanging out. We'll get a lot more of these focuses, or not focuses, research and production, but we have to wait until 2012 to do at least these. And let her in, we have to wait until the Queen dissolves Parliament and have mass. So that's issues occurred. Tragedy struck the UK not long ago, and now as all Union Jack flies at half mass, we must ask ourselves grave questions. Um, the strength of the Foreign Office. Weakened during the collapse of Western democracy, the Foreign Office should be restored to its rightful place in influential department of our government and truly, truly British military. Death of glory, the motto of our army hasn't changed as it faces those who wish to undermine a great nation. Our soldiers should be proud that they're British and defend our And allies. as soon as I faded out, we have David Owen assassinated. Nice. Uh, the Prime Minister and his deputy Shirley Williams were running on the outskirts of Greater London when the Secret Service became aware of a possible threat. According to local officers, 
A suspicious black sedan was parked at the fan side of these grounds with its owner seemingly gone for hours up to that point. The surface, in fact, more than 100 meters away from the pair, it became clear to them that the two most powerful politicians of Britain could be targets of a possible assassination. The dispatch proceeded to run towards Owen Williams, but they were too late. A camouflaged figure took two shots. One hit the Prime Minister and the second barely missed Deputy P PM Williams, piercing the hill just behind her. Before anyone could come to their senses, the assassin disappeared, and Owen lay motionless at Shirley Williams' feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. To the horror of all the British citizens, Royal London Hospital declared that this afternoon that their beloved long-term leader passed away. Oh my god. Oh. Well, crap. That's not good. Shirley Williams. Well, it, it, it's finally happened. It's finally happened. At least we do something now. Um, so, obviously, with this campaign, we got to go with this way that we're in. Our glorious queen is all parliament. She shall rule by decree from now on. From now onwards. British Isles Protection Union faction. Oh, are we in a faction? Green officially assumes power. Oh, yeah, we are. Huh. Is it just us? Democratic. You left us, huh? Julio. Not bad. Not bad. And America is kind of uh, all broke. Brokey broke. Some guy named Preston. Some guy named Zyuganov. Modro. Italy's it is kind of weird in this one, because they can go many, many, many different paths, so. Um, so Italy declares refugee crisis. Pretty normal. Uh, who's in the Dutch land? Some Ina. Ina. Ina, Ina. And then there's Yugoslavia. Broken Brotherhood. Oh, God, that sucks. Yugoslav model. Maybe she plays Yugoslavia. Do they, be, oh, they do have unique... Uh, no, it's not a really unique focus, I think. Queen Storm's Parliament. And then a scene never to have occurred in hundreds of years. Her Majesty barged into the House of Parliament, <clears throat> accompanied by Prince Charles, her security detail, and various members of the House of Lords. With a motive unknown, it's become increasingly clear that the Queen is making her way towards her very own House of Commons, deemed unofficially illegal by the British political society since the 1600s. As she approaches the door, she would be let her in and see what she has to say, or should the Queen remain locked out forever in her House of Commons? Lock her out, let her in. She dissolves Parliament. I hereby utilize my royal decree to dissolve this house at once. So the closing words of a grand but brief speech followed by the Queen's message to Britain. According to her, the assassination of Prime Minister Owen by Soviet agents can prove that we are still not safe from the communist threat, and we must enact a radical change to counter it. As a mix of this historic news uh, reaches the country and planet, the reception is mixed. Some say she's restoring the glory of Britain as a sovereign state, while others claim that this is Britain's pathway to dictatorship. Only time will tell, as I have another cup of coffee too. The Queen officially assumes power. Nice. Since her dissolution of the Parliament and establishment of absolute control for Her Majesty, she's now not officially become the autocrat she obviously tends to be. Today, however, the de facto has become de jure. With Britain's uh, provisional government officially starting, Parliament is no more, and Her Majesty shall rule unopposed by the traitorous Republicans. Obviously, this is never a shock to the British people, and many are going about their daily lives being more apolitical than ever in these interesting times. Perhaps Queen Elizabeth II can really rule without anyone trying to bring her down. Great. New Privy Council. Threaten the Conservatives. Far right alliance. Ooh, more political power. Threaten the Social Democrats. Social Democrats are convinced that the Queen aims to end the freedom of the British people. We should threaten them before such a dissident party does something stupid. Look at the Queen! Democracy in my United Kingdom? Or I guess my... of Great Britain? Where are we at? House of Windsor. Wow, 3%. That's not good. Cool. Oh, hello. Yeah, you're not doing so well over there, are you? They're in the Conservatives, too. Sidelined by the Social Democratic Party, now unable to form a government again for a long time. Conservatives are itching for a revolt against a new order. Ah, Cascadia, eh? Let me do a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. Victory for the Omaha clique. Huh. Warren Buffett. Now, Social Democrats pledge support. Alright, well, okay. Warren Buffett. Ah, uh, not unique folks. That sucks. Social Democrats pledge support. Social Democratic Party leader Shirley Williams has pledged outright support for Her Majesty's administration, and in particular, a recent controversial coup against the Parliament, our elected Parliament. Disappointing various radicals who wish for her to rise against the Queen, Williams made this announcement on the grounds of the Parliament. On a bright day, man, he hadn't been seen in weeks. Finally, the issue of the SDP, uh, SDP republicanism can be put to rest, knowing that their paramount leader is completely behind Elizabeth II. Excellent. Far right alliance. Unlike the rebellious establishment parties, the far right are more willing to accept our glorious order. 
which will appeal to the sense of pa- pride and patriotism and allow their leaders to the royalist Conservative cause. parties pledge support as well. Experiencing leadership contests in the Conservative a Party, style is best for the deputy to make a very special announcement to British, British media. Nigel Farage calls journalists allies and opponents of the Conservative headquarters, officially declaring and signing a document that states his party is completely behind Queen Elizabeth II. The document also states that Her Majesty's coup is perfectly understandable and justified against a failing parliament, making the Conservatives a new laughing stock of Britain. More or less, however, the uh, Queen shouldn't be seeing any true opposition for the Tories anytime soon. New Privy Council. Oh, that's not bad. Better justify world goals I like that. New powers for the House of Lords. Perhaps British security. Ooh, that's pretty good too for decryption and whatnot. Monthly population. Hurts the consumer goods though. Uh, elite society. Ooh, I like that too. A lot more political power even though we don't really need that eventually. Uh, empower corporations. Corporate conference. Uh, puppet parliament. You lose political power and division organization. Well, let's at least empower the House of Lords first. Uh, the House of Commons is a relic of an unstable and uncertain past. Britain's House of Lords shall have more power and sway within the national government. Abolish the House of Commons. Ban leftist parties. Purge Republicans. We get more tech. I do like that one. One coalition. Restore economic confidence. That's not bad to give us a little bit of a boost. We only have 29 civvies, but still. But purging sounds like fun. Kim Jong Il, goodbye. Queen's soldiers. That's nice. National royal holiday. Spy on the people. Pass the British Security Act. Appease Scotland. Uh, recover from backlash. Wow. One union under England. Rebuild Scotland. Days of glory. I mean, I don't know. If we're going to be violent anyways, we might as well go fully violent. So, let's go abolish the House of Commons. Uh, maybe next time we do this route, maybe we'll go with public parliament. But the Queen and, the and far right meet. Um, elite members of the far right parties in Britain first. A Brit- uh, British National Party and others met with her Majesty this morning for an official day breakfast. Huh. We're all going to get breakfast together. Well, the meeting wasn't permitted inside once the meeting began. It's clear that they're discussing some kind of deal with the head of the state. This deal could put far right parties at the forefront of British politics for the coming decades, taking over more moderate political positions from the center, returning home. BNP leader Nick Griffin could only say the meeting was productive and helped him clear up various, uh, p- various policy positions with the Queen. Interesting. A uh, Pash British Security Act. All citizens of the United Kingdom shall be observed closely in case of possible unpatriotic activities, which will vastly expand our CCTV network and give the government communications headquarters wide-ranging powers to ensure security and continuing stability in Her Majesty's realm. And New Privy Council. As New Privy Council, she only advise the Queen, not attempt to directly influence her decisions, but the Queen was born to rule the Iron Fist she has now been granted, and no one will get her way. Of course. Why would they? Why would they want to get her in her way? We need to build, build, build. Also, um, let me see. Let's get some more attack because I just want to attack people. Um, Engineer Brigade. This is 13, which is not bad. This is really kind of... Mm, this one already comes with uh, this amount. So it'll be 1, 2, 3. Uh, fill in 3 more for that. 1, 2, 3. Uh, get, go. Go 3. Go 3. I think 3 would be fine. Uh, armor Brigades are what we have. Armor Divisions are honestly better. So... I don't like the anti-air. Oh, no, anti-air is okay, but it's on these divisions. Eh. One, two, three, and then four. But then one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. That gives you about the same amount of armor. Organization is okay. You need to throw at least one more tank here. If it hurts your organization even more, which sucks, but like it gives you way more armor. So if anything, I'm just gonna go and do this as well. There you go. There you go. Um, also, <clears throat> if you're wondering about the history, please go right ahead of this. So let's start with. Uh, the most recent one, the Treaty of Dublin, and then because these will all just pop up in order, so. So if you want to read about these, please go right ahead as we let time go on. Millennium Emergency, 1950 General Election, 51 General Election. So I apologize if I went really fast with that, but just it, it is what it is. Uh, maintenance companies, they yeah, definitely want those for tanks. 
sweeping new powers for Britain's upper house. The House of Lords were declared late in the afternoon by Prince Philip. While the Queen was on holiday in Wales, the Prince gathered the support of various barons to act for reforms allowing these powers. Now the House can dictate, dictate national foreign policy with power with approval over Majesty, of course. Finally, the remnants of the old House of Commons have been swept away, but at least until we restore the lower house. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, as much as I want artillery, that would be nice and all. Uh, or just get these three. We'll probably go with these three. Meantime, motorized artillery, you know what? Research speed. I always use this one. Are you a Land Rover? Let's go with tank stuff. More reliability is nice too. A little ahead of time. I'll grab some of this. Grab some more of the industry stuff because, my god, do we need it? <sighs> and that's why we grab this guy too. Which is really nice. New Privy Council. So we're going to beeline through this side here. And then we go over here. War Advisor. Economic Advisor. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Do you have more political power? More welfare? Oh god. That's a lot more output though. 30%. Add less welfare, better consumer goods. Abolish the House of Commons. What's the point of absolute royal rule if Parliament is still allowed to operate? The House of Commons is but a centuries of old vestige of a time when the royal house had to make concessions to an uppity citizenry. With the sense of past and with the people's loyalty to the majesty consented, we do need not maintain such archaic institutions. I mean, it doesn't make sense why Queen Elizabeth would go this way, but then again, why would she storm Parliament? You know, <clears throat> but the wedding. Prince William and Kate Middleton met in 2001. The engagement in October 2010 was announced in November of the same year by Clarence House, and the build-up to their wedding has attracted much media attention. The occasion was a public holiday in Britain and featured many ceremonial aspects, including the use of state carriages and roles for the foot guards and household cavalry. Events were held around the nation to mark the wedding with organizations and hotels holding events. <coughs> Our over 5,000 people, or 5,000 street parties, were held throughout Britain, and one million people lined up the route between Westminster Abbey and Buckingham Palace. The ceremony was viewed by tens of millions more around the world, including 72 million live streams. In our country alone, TV audiences peaked at 26.3 million viewers. We wish them well. Yeah, I guess we do. Need more guns. And that's something I live by. Need more guns, man. Um, go with air combat, why not? I know we need to focus more on army stuff, but I always do artillery. I always do it. And I want to focus on uh, more motorized stuff for this time, so. I'll say no. I don't like attrition that much, but. Or attrition reduction. But no, we'll also try it, why not? We're going to need to definitely build some of those up. The Queen becomes second longest reigning monarch. Unmarked by any official com uh, commemorations, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II has become the second longest in British history, overtaking that of George III. Since ascending the throne of their death of her father, George VI, on February 6, 1952, the Queen has reigned for a total of 59 years and 110 days. She now ranks second only to Queen Victoria, who died in 1901, after 63 years. The Queen, who celebrates her diamond jubilee next year, is set to overtake even Victoria's record in September of 2016 at the age of 89. Along with the Queen, Balance of parties. <clears throat> With the incessant demands for equality and democracy, the left has hindered our efforts significantly, and thus must be cut off or cut out of British politics forever. The SPD and Labour have played out their part and will go into the dustbin of history. It will take a while to get to, but that's right. Telling Congress overthrown? Nice. Purge Republicans. War advisor. Uh, well, with, within the Privy Council, a war advisor shall inform the Queen of what military actions can be taken outside of Britain's borders to protect the people, of course. Economic advisor. Within the Privy Council, an economic advisor shall inform the Queen of what economic reforms could be enacted within Britain. We'll call uh, upon most a loyal subject from the private sector to ensure that her, her Majesty's will is aided only by the best and brightest of her own. Her Majesty's represent representative. Since our righteous coup against Parliament, the international community has looked at Britain with disgust. For some reason, they use, view us as lesser because of a glorious absolute rule. With the new foreign representative, however, this should all change. More welfare? I don't know. Which Less welfare. Should we be generous or should we not be generous, everybody? Let me know in the uh, comments below. Should we do more welfare? Or should we do less welfare? I'll leave that up to you. What do you think the Queen would do in this case? As we're abolishing the House of Commons. So, it's up, I'll leave that up to y'all. Should we do this soon? Yeah. Pope Pius takes power, huh? Also, we aren't making any new ships because I forgot to do this too. Uh, carriers, you need radar, so that's why I'm waiting for that. At least level 2. Good, at least level two. Also, why do you have anti air? Get some armor. These things will die so fast without armor. It's not even funny. Uh, I don't mind at least having that. Yeah, no armor it means just it's just gonna die. That's yeah. oh, a abolished. My wretches overthrow this putrid body simply sparked a chain of events. That have shown to the British people that I, that only I should be paramount leader of the nation. Former democratic lower house has been despised by the people for, for almost any reason. And now I can probably tell them that this shall not continue. I'm your ruler until the day I die. Excellent speech, your majesty. So let's go with that. We need definitely some more motorized or armored personnel carriers. So, um, I'm Amy Winehouse found dead. Let's go do this too. <clears throat> Senior Amy Winehouse has been found dead at her North 
a home in North London at the age of 27. The award-winning artist and anti-Soviet political activist, famous for his including liberation from the critically acclaimed album European Nights, was discovered by police in the late afternoon. Her death was being treated on Saturday night as unexplained, but sources said she died of a drug overdose. Winehouse was last seen with her goddaughter Dion Bromfield early last week when the teenager performed at a Manchester festival. She was beginning to pour into one of the most celebrated and troubled British artists of recent times, Mark Ronson. He produced European Nights, said she was a mu my musical soulmate and like a sister to me. This is one of the saddest days of my life. Rest in peace. Purge Republicans. Even worse than simple leftists, Republicans must be executed by the Queen's orders. These dissidents have no place in Britain, only wishing to undermine Her Majesty. We get a Republicans purge for this one, too. Nice. Um, after this one, we'll probably do... Stability is always nice. Spy on the people. Pass British security. We'll get there. We'll definitely get there, trust me. Oh, Cass. We... No, we need more world tension. Also, this is unhistorical, so we'll see what happens. Ah, I'll go with Landover, why not? We'll definitely see what type of fights occur. Atlanta Lincoln, Republic of Alaska, United Mexican States, Phoenix. Did they take Albuquerque? Las Cruces. No, they do not. Texas has Albuquerque. 2011 riots. The 2011 England riots occurred in August of 2011, when thousands of people revolted or rioted in several London boroughs in the cities and towns across England. The resulting chaos generated uh, looting, arson, and mass deployment of police, and resulted in the deaths of five people. Protests started in Tottenham, following the death of Mark Duggan, a local man who was shot dead by police in early August. Several violent clashes with police ensued, along with the destruction of police vehicles, a double-decker bus, and many homes and businesses, thus rapidly gaining attention from the media. Jeremy Corbyn expresses outrage. Who cares? Leader of the factional Independent Labour Party, <coughs> excuse me, Jeremy Corbyn, has dramatically expressed his outrage at the Queen. Holding her on the outskirts alone and drawing thousands, the radical leftists declared the banning of this party as a slap in the face of democracy. He went even so far as to say Britain is no longer free and the Queen can no longer be stopped on her tyrannical path. Of course, however, he's simply a delusional leftist loon, and by now the Queen has probably realized she doesn't need to pay attention to him. Screw the leftists. And, uh, national royal holiday. With the specter of republicanism still hanging over Britain, a few additional measures might need to be needed to remind the people of Her Majesty's grace and benevolence. An annual holiday is an excellent opportunity to bring all of Britain together to celebrate our traditions and the monarchy itself. As we are slowly trying to get more, um, you know, focus is done, technology done, all that good stuff. 2011. Ah, uh, sure, why not? So, Anders supports a revolt. Nice, a famine here, huh? Uh, military police, just in case? Sure, why not? I forgot to help these guys out. Then again, do we really care about this place? I mean, it's freaking Africa. They're all socialists, it seems like, for the most part. They're international theory. As long with fundamentalism. Is that the only thing going on right now? Oh, no, there's a lot. Oh, American Northeastern War. American Commonwealth, People's Republic or whatever. Oh, wow, look at this. Well, crap. Sonia Sotomayor. Standing firm. Political deadlocks. Western corruption. Pray for New York. What is this one then? Democratic Socialist brokered peace. Fought on. London to New England. Deal with Britain. I don't know, which one do we hate more? Um who has air bases around here? I can't tell. Who cares? New England, um, do you have more developed things here? So I'm gonna say I don't want you. Let's go with you then, maybe. Can we see? I just want to send ball, like aircraft, because I want our aircraft to get a little bit of experience at least. So let's go and send over half of you. Just see what it's like. If they don't have air superiority, or they do, I'll send these guys back, and then we'll get some planes. Or some casts. Or just drones. Because I like droning people. I'm an American, you know. People go, go boom sometimes. Yep, they do have enemy air stuff. So. Republicans purge. Republicans like Labour member Dennis Skinner have been trying to ruin our constitutional monarchy for countless decades. Declaring this monarchy a useless <clears throat> institution. Now, with the Queen having balanced power over her subjects, 
She's finally been able to purchase a few beans. Announcing this morning that all Republicans shall be hunted down and arrested for their treachery against the British people. Jewish monarchists and outrage from Republicans are obvious, but the latter group are only the ones who be, need to be worried about. They can no longer hide in the Queen's soldiers. While Her Majesty technically is the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, archaic legislation still prevents Her Majesty from utilizing her army without the Senate Parliament. Needless to say, such obstructionism does not befit our new United Kingdom and will be overturned. So we could do this one. So we're going to do Puppet Parliament in the future. We will appease Scotland. So, but we're going to go one unit under England and beat them up and then rebuild it in our own image. So we're doing down here. We're doing okay. <coughs> Ours. There's. Well, we'll do what we can. Um, drones, fighters. Why not? I'll go up there. Oh, there goes the Union of Libya, or U Libyan Union, or whatever. National Royal Holiday. Preparations for the British Royal Holiday were underway weeks ago as millions of Britons expressed their support for Her Majesty and the glorious rule over the strong Islands. It's a lot of main intention, however, was to show the world that Britain was once again united under a strong leader. It will take much more threatening power to overthrow the Queen as the day approaches. The people are jubilant, and the Union Jacks cover every single street corner. In the political contest, at least, Elizabeth is winning. Wonderful. Oh, hello. Two more. That's fine. Just gotta keep an eye on how much, you know, actual uh, oil we have here, too. And how much infantry we actually have, because we only so much. Uh, go with light aircraft. You know. The European famine. How do we get more manpower? I forgot how we do that. Oh, it's far right demand, so. We're only volunteer only, which is fine, whatever. One union under England. Uh, queen Elizabeth II is the Queen of England and England only. All those who think this nation should appease terrorists in Scotland and Wales are no better than the terrorists themselves. So, which means we probably should get ready. Is this where the dividing line is between England? Yeah. Right there. Just in case. You know, wink wink, nudge nudge. You never know what's going to happen. Pathetic oil, it's almost 2012. Grab some of this. Oh, it's over already. Oh crap. What am I going to send my bombers to? Oh, spy on the people? Well, Pash British Security Act, so be it. Um, spy on the people. Oh, wait, requires. And then requires. Past British security, so we'll get this one done. Yeah, to resolve a current academic situation, of course, <clears throat> some reforms are needed. Make some slight reductions in union influence on the economy and remove some unnecessary regulations to ensure that business can do what it needs to re-energize the British economy, of course. Of course, you know, of course. Guns? I love guns. Spy on the people. British Security Act gave our intelligence agencies various new capabilities, but this reform should even further expand those to cover the wide ranging or wide range of monitoring. Cass, yeah boy. Yeah boy. Coyote's nice. I could use those for putting down stuff like that. Oh, also, how about this? No Garrison, thank God we have nothing right now. Game of Spain, no, 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 no. None of you are gonna get your stuff. Pap oh sh sh Nikes. Well, I think I know what I want to play later. Papal State. Appease Catholics. Of course, Papal rules. Oh, Pius is here. Restore order outside Rome. The aircratic constitution? Officially the EU, unite all Italians, call on Catholic nations, Holy League, call on nationalists. The new Deus Volt. The Diamond Jubilee, the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II was a multinational celebration throughout 2012. That marked the 60th anniversary of the ascension of Queen Elizabeth II on February 6th, 1952. The Queen's a region of various states across the world and of course the United Kingdom. The only other time in British history that a monarch celebrated a Diamond Jubilee was in 1897 when Queen Victoria celebrated hers. Commemorative events were held throughout the former Commonwealth nations, but unlike the Queen's previous jubilees, Queen Elizabeth II and her husband only toured the UK, along with the Queen. <coughs> a British Security Act, because you know we have to do it. Today, the House of Lords passed much to a British Security Act, followed by an excellent speech from the Queen herself. With my gracious royal approval, the British Security Act should go down in history as one of the greatest enforcements of law, order, and safety in the entire world. Now the people of Britain can finally know they're secure in their own homes, and the enemies of the state shall no longer remain hidden from the government. 
on such a joy as yeah, I think all those are the upper house and the swift passing of the SBSA. And we can help you continue this glorious country safe, keeping this uh, glorious country safe from foreign intrusion. Silly by some is a great victory for the Queen's supposedly new, holy new order, and despised by many due to its totalitarian ideals. The act uh, will surely get a rift in our society, but of course, all those supposedly won't be hidden in this time. Britain's safe again, and that's what matters. Britain is safe. Nice. And then we can put one union under England. <clears throat> Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of England, uh, of England only. All those who think this nation should be should peace, terrorists in Scotland and Wales are no better than the terrorists themselves. Rebelled Scotland. The world of Scotland was horrific for many of its people, who only wanted peace under the glorious Queen. Her Majesty is naturally magna magnanimous in this victory, and will devote some funds towards the reconstruction of Scotland. New Industrial Revolution. What computer development? Well, I'll leave this up to you guys too for this episode. Should we do new industrial revolution and everything that has its effects over here? Or should we do state investment? With Scottish military industry, that's well, not bad. That's actually really good. Really good. Uh, dual military industry or English military industry. I feel like we should probably go this direction though, but you know, I'll leave it up to you guys. Rural development, urban development, revive England, of course, the national naval industry, British infrastructure initiative, um, Scottish dockyard, defending Scotland's coast, Royal Scottish Guard. Revive Scotland. Oh, well, that makes sense after we burn it down, but you know, whatever. Chief Center, sure, why not? Nice. Minor economic reforms. Uh, we'll see. One well, union under us. Which would be a great thing. We'll rebuild, minor economic reforms. Resolve recurrent economic situations, some reforms are needed. We shall make some slight reductions to the union influence on the economy and remove some unnecessary regulations like I read before. Be sure that the business can do what it needs to re energize the British economy, which kind of sucks for consumer goods, but whatever. We're still building up a lot of cities. Nice. Yes, we are. Don't combine it for now, it's fine, whatever. Uh, they're ex relatively experienced, even though there's not that many of them, which kind of sucks, but whatever. And you guys look probably pretty bad, yeah. We definitely need some tanks. Yeah, we need a military industry. Air burst weapons, nice. So we need 12 still, grab what else? Tanks? Armor skirts, uh, probably never gonna need, I might use those, we'll see. The war for Scotland, of course, as well. Should probably stop training. You guys come up here. And we'll see what happens. Maybe it would be really bad for us. Maybe it would be okay for us. Another war for Scotland. <clears throat> the Queen's recent speech, describing one union under England, has sent shockwaves through the various regions, but especially Scotland. Hours after the historic statement, independence activists were already seen leaving their homes to convene in Scotland's highest level of administration. There, they proclaimed a new Scottish state independent of the Queen and her tyrannical United Kingdom, calling on all Scottish people to rise up against her supposedly disgusting rule. However, this stretch clear, British soldiers are ready to fight to the death for Her Majesty. Scotland will soon be ours. Well, at least we have no more tensions. Oh. Oh, crap. I thought it would be just, uh... For some reason, I thought it would just be... Wales would come out, too, but whatever. Let's go in. Bombing? I love bombing people. War advisor? That'd be pretty nice. Just fine. We'll go somewhere. Let's go down. I think society is pretty decent too, but we're gonna get a lot. Of, we're gonna get something power. How strong is our navy and such like that? It should be that strong, right? The army shouldn't be that strong. Eh, it should be all right. So, ooh, is that L seven two A two and N law? Nice. Microphones. Pearson. Ah. We do three divisions there. Glasgow is on the front line, which is good, good, good. Up them out. Glasgow, Glasgow, something like that. I don't know. You guys go right there. Go, motorized boys. Go, 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 go. You can force attack, but what's the point of that? Causing unnecessary casualties. Nice. Four hundred versus thirteen thousand. Oh, they're forcing defense. Oh, okay, fine. We'll force attack too. Aww. 
Thanks, Scotland. So we're a bit ahead of time for that. Give you a spot more fuel. Nice. About Scotland, days of glory. <coughs> Excuse me. Her Majesty once reigned over a magnificent empire, stretching from the Caribbean around the world of the Pacific Ocean. These days of, glo of glory are long gone due to the failures of democracy. Now the world shall see a renewed age of British glory, and this time we won't be stopped. I'll get the event Old Union Jack raised, known as the United Kingdom. Way better just five vocal sounds, which I like, 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 like a lot. There we go. You want mobile warfare? That'd be nice. Get some more radar. Even though it's not super, 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 super important. How many people do I have repairing stuff? Only one. That's fine. Improve armor protection. Um, what else? Heavy ship holes? Maybe eventually. Don't think it'd be too much concern in the future, but whatever. How many planes do we have here? Ah. A few more fighters, hopefully, over there. That'd be nice. So we got plenty of political power now. Like I said, I mean, there's really no point. I mean, I guess we go up here to get more output. So let's, we're not going to go up anymore. But whatever, you know. Mm. We're using drones too. Must get that as well. Days of glory, nice. <clears throat> Elite society. British society should not be showcased. Poverty stricken and run down. At least the world's media will only see our elite side. That, that of the royals and the benefactors. And monarch of Northern Ireland. All this independence was a mistake and aimed at securing control for the corrupt political parties of the time. We must return to our divided kingdom. Yeah, you bet it better. We tried our naval invasion. I don't think we even have, like, parachute planes. You guys aren't going to do very well trying to, you know. Navy invade from here to there, or whatever. There you go. Try that. Don't die too much. 2013, it's getting back close to 2013. Just go and grab what? Construction speed? Yeah, why not? Build, 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 build. And we need more world attention. We're gonna, we're, we are gonna generate the world attention, let's be real. So. And Princess Royal. Sir John Sars. Old Union Jack raised. For the first time since the late 1980s, Union Jack included St. Patrick's at Red Saltier, as been raised by the House of Westminster, commonly known as the House of Parliament. This flag is the issue of countless debates supported by Unionists from the Ulster and despised by Republicans from the same province. Nevertheless, this radical change will surely give the Queen the legitimacy she needs to restore the Empire. Rule Britannia. Try Canada. Operation Green. Oh, yeah. Almost 100 years ago, the spineless men signed away and took a part of the realm, Ireland. Time's going to rectify that mistake. Once more, the British Isles shall be united under one flag. <clears throat> Canada, British Caribbean. Oh, my God. We got a lot of conquest. Pressure the Algerian. Algerians. <laughs> Not the Algerians. Maybe the Algerians, but Argentinians, really. But regrettably, I must inform you, I'm out of coffee. Spanish marriage. Oh my goodness. Wait, we have Spain? Arabian memories, nice. Pacific Empire. Cool. 13 colonies. Oh boy. A Hong Kong mistake. Oh man. Mobile warfare. More speed, less organization, less, much more planning speed. Nice. Yeah, let's see how far we get. Let's get to 24 divisions of infantry. I think that's good enough for us. I don't want to push it any harder than that. Heavy ship holes, very good. Uh, 2012. Heavy ship holes are kind of a waste of time. Revolutionary socialists there. No one cares, though, really. Um, armor personnel. Guns are okay. Artillery is alright as well. Of course, we're not using that too much. Monica, Northern Ireland, you bet we are. 
Operation Green, you betcha. You see wolf. I like this one because you can get to this one. If you only do this one, I don't think you can get to this one, so Silent Hunters, I like just more. Cool, then just, just chuck the crap out of all those torpedoes. And you? Um, there's an air controller, which is pretty good. And even more sword efficiency is really good as well. 20% is really nice. I always do that one though, but that's always really good to do that one, so Flight Director. Even more sword efficiency is just like phenomenal. Bastion European Democracy. Perfect. Go, 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 go. I don't have any people they have there, but whatever. Oh, we just landed. Yay! We took the guns. Can't end the episode before we take out Ireland as, as the UK, right? That's what I thought. Oh, poor old Ireland. Oh, well. Operation Green. Ultimatum to Cyprus. After changing hands between various nations, Cyprus must be returned to the UK the easy way or the hard way. It's Spanish marriage. Spain's one of the few European countries that have been able to preserve its monarchy and now stands strong against the twin scourges of republicanism and communism. A marriage with a Spanish royal family would be a secure along strong, strong alliance between our two nations. West African colonies. Nations like Nigeria and Ghana failed without British oversight. Arabian memories. The British Empire wants control of the jewels of Asia, restoring, the, uh, restoring them to their Majesty's Rome will put their natural resources, particularly oil, back under British control, which would only make a welcome addition to our imperial ambitions. Commonwealth joins, can't create our own faction. That'd be nice. Irish trade? Well, I mean, they're dead, so we technically aren't trading with them, but whatever. Defend the streets, state of the military, British tanks. Yeah, this is okay. Having colonial coastal forts, not colonial forts. Coastal forts. Alright, well whatever. Drones, I love drones. I love droning people. Queen restores old title. It restored the British monarch's former title, the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. One has been lost in the, lost in the pages of history. <clears throat> Since Ireland's treacherous rebellion against the King George V, British monarchists have. Remain without this glorious full title, settling for Northern Ireland until even that was taken from us by a government supposedly formed in her name. Uh, but now that all that's behind us, the Queen Elizabeth are restoring the glory of her once magnificent position. How the world react to such a remarkable news? We're not sure. But we really don't care. The Irish will pay for the treachery. And they have up to like six divisions, so I mean. Dublin's already fallen. Bye, Ireland. Bye bye. Who's next? It'll be a really fun campaign. Why oh, can't take it? Really? I might just start the next episode with just us doing a time lapse, just of us just invading other people. Um, which is going to be kind of difficult for us to do if we don't have a lot of areas to you know launch an invasion from. So we got to figure out where we're going to invade from. Mm -hmm. We get Cyprus. That'd be great. So let's see what happens here, because we can from Cyprus. We can probably invade Egypt, maybe, maybe not. Canada, British Caribbean, we'll go against Canada. How strong is Canada right now? They are in the Democratic League, which kind of does suck, but, you know, they have quite a few divisions. We probably want to wait to do those guys. Uh, fuel refining. Yeah, why not? I'll get that one, too. Uh, Arabian Memories, Arabia. Do we have anything, anything down here at all? Because um, we go here, we can probably invade Egypt, too. Let's say we get Cyrenica, maybe. All right, but we'll see. Come on, I just want more world tension, man. Export focus, we can't get rid of the exports, that sucks. Uh, artillery Brigade is going get back to engineers. And 16th Air Assault Brigade, I mean, that, that's just so British, but like, Probably not going to use that, just saying. Ultimatum. Ah, uh, they refuse. The ignorant and chaotic Cypriot government has responded to our televised ultimatum. Instead of opting for peace and tranquility between our peoples, they unfortunately decided not to be reincorporated as the territory of the British Empire. Until we can militarily occupy that island, the people of Cyprus can never be at peace. So we took a stand and gave it to them, defending our rightful uh, lands from a Greek or Turkish invasion. Fools, fools, fools. God dang, is there anywhere we can invade from? So, I don't think so. That's going to be a little difficult to get to. Mm, but if we got Spain in the alliance, we could probably do that. But I think <clears throat> my voice is 
continually not working today, but whatever. Enjoy the video, though. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also start reclaiming the former British Empire. Thanks for watching. Have a great United Kingdom rest of your day.